Hey everybody, hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna be checking out Taylor Swift's album, Fearless. Now, of course, I'm gonna be doing the Taylor version. I'm gonna continue with the format of doing the Spotify playlist with the lyrics right up on screen over there. And uh, after today's reactions, I'm gonna move on to the vault tracks, the music videos, some live performances and interviews that are surrounding this era. But I don't know exactly what to expect going into this album. The self-titled album wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Um, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. But can she capture that lightning in a bottle again? What does she have to talk about now? How will she be setting the stage? I guess we're gonna find out right now. Get a build. There's something about the way the street looks when it's just rain. There's a glow off the pavement. You walk me to the car. And you know I wanna ask you to dance right there in the middle of the parking lot. So she's automatically setting the stage. So we're opening up just like a story. Okay. All right. Let's see where it's going. Touch of folk. We're driving down the road. I wonder if you know I'm trying so hard not to get caught up now. But you're just so cool when your hands through your hair. Absent mindedly making me want you. And I don't know how it gets better than this. You think Kind of violent. <laughs> Ooh, the touch of organs, nice. So baby drive slow till we run out of road in this one horse town. I wanna stay right here. She wants it to last forever. Is that fuzz? Okay, so I'm automatically, uh, I'm, I'm noticing some differences just on the overall tone from the self-titled album to this one. It seems to be a little more aggressive, seems to be pushing more in that envelope of heading towards rock with little influences in touches of folk, uh, but it's still keeping kind of like that Southern charm to it with the touch of the almost church-esque organ. And I can't help but think this is a little bit violent. She's, so she's stuck in the car with this dude and she wants this moment to last forever. She's like infatuated with him and being cool in his movements and touching his hair. And I don't think he has any clue. I'm digging this guitar tone. It's got a little bit more fuzz to it, touch of indie rock to it. Now we're moving on to cleans, but. Oh. It's fearless. So they kissed. Oh, yeah. Cause I don't know how it gets better than this. You take my hand and drag me at first. Fearless. That's nice. Really leading into the folk.
What a fantastic opener. Not only structurally does this work as an opener, starting with instrument to instrument and just building, I think overall as a story and as the message of what I believe this album is going to be about, if it's following a theme of Fearless, I feel like it all coincides here. So she's obsessed with this dude or infatuated with this dude. I'm not sure what the right word is to use, but she's caught up with this guy. She's not exactly sure if he understands how she feels, but he did kiss her. Now, I don't know if this is a real story or if this is something she's making up or if this is something that happened to her, but the main message of her just being kind of almost not in control in this situation is kind of scaring her, but her following her heart is the thing that is fearless. That's what I'm believing. That's what I'm getting from these lyrics. Whether it's real or not, I guess we, we just don't know. Or maybe you can just tell me in the comments, uh, but I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of sweet, but then it's got a sprinkle of like violence to it. <laughs> Take me by the hand. Okay, it sounds nice. Sweet teenage love. I'm down for it. And then grab me by the head. I mean, I think that's the line that she's basically supposed to be emphasizing that she's not in control of the situation. Just he's going to do what he will with her. And she is going to be a, uh, you know, a hopeless romantic and just kind of follow along into it for the hope of love, which I've come to learn from Taylor Swift. So I don't know. It's kind of scary just to kind of put yourself out there like that and and just to be that vulnerable with people. And I think that's the whole idea of Fearless in this uh, opening track. You take a deep breath and you walk through the doors. It's the morning of your very first day. Like school? You say hi to your friends you ain't seen in a while. Try and stay out of everybody's way. Oh, your freshman year, yeah. <laughs> it's your freshman year and you're gonna be here for the next four years in this town. Hoping one of those senior boys will wink at you and say, Funny how that happens. Laughing at the other girls who think they're so cool will be out a year as soon as we can. And then you're on your very first date, and he's got a car, and you're feeling like flying. And your mama's waiting up, and you're thinking he's the one, and you're dancing around your room. Touch with the cello. It's interesting because it sounds like she's running it from the pers perspective of her looking back or in hindsight or, or whatever. I don't think that she's writing this from the perspective of actually being a 15 year old. I think she's talking about the story about when she first went on this date, when she first met Abigail and her life and, and her just general outlook at that point. So it's kind of interesting. She's definitely leaning away from the country. Yeah. 
There it is. The touch of cello is beautiful. Back then I swore I was gonna marry him someday, but I realized some bigger dreams of mine. Abigail gave everything she had to a boy who changed his mind. Both cried. Somebody tells you they love you. You gonna believe them. And when you're 15, don't forget to look before you fall. But I found time can heal most anything. And you just might find who you're supposed to be. Beautiful layering. That was nice. So this is a new, it sounds even strange even <laughs> I'm about to say this, but this is a more mature sound for sure, 100%. Even though it's written from the perspective of somebody uh, that's 15 and dealing with the issues that they had, even though the story is being told in hindsight, it's still kind of like take me back to like when I was younger and like my first days at school and like basically making friends with the person who I sat next to and we became, you know, good friends all through high school. Um, I don't know if that's just what happens through proximity or what, but we did. We became good friends, so I can relate to that as well. But what's so sweet about this is her talking about Abigail. You know, I always I always really take note of people's... When, she, when it's a Taylor Swift song, I take note of the person's name and what they're going through. Because oftentimes you might think the song is about uh, her, Taylor, when in reality it's about somebody else. It's a story driven around somebody else completely. And as much as I think this is telling her experience, I think she's you know, remembering her experience, but almost from a different perspective of her own and, and Abigail's as well. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, so she meets Abigail, they become friends. They, they, they laugh and joke at the other popular trendier girls or whatever. And they they say they're going to get out of this town one day. Uh, Taylor goes for this football guy, Abigail falls and she, and she goes for a football guy and she, you know, it doesn't work out and it's not really the end of the world, but you know, it definitely hurt her. But Abigail, unfortunately, does not get out of this her first relationship unscathed. One of my favorite lines, or one of the more interesting lines here is, is when Abigail gets hurt, it wasn't just Abigail that was crying. It was we were crying. So that like really solidifies like just how important and how close they were as friends. And um, I just think it's a, it's a beautiful line. You know, she talks about positive experiences in her way and negative experiences in a different girl. But even though this other girl's having negative experience, it's it's affecting both of them negatively, which just showing how cool of a friendship they had. But it just takes you back. It takes you back to like when you were young and when you were just, you know, at that age of just entering high school and the anxieties and excitement that kind of goes along with it. You know, new fresh faces that you didn't know before, you know, from seniors uh, or older kids. It's an interesting time in your life because you're starting to make adult decisions, even though you were very much still a child. You're starting to take romance serious or as serious as you can take it when you're 15. You're starting to really realize the repercussions of hurting somebody or being hurt uh, from an outside relationship. And when I say outside relationship, I mean a relationship outside of your family. You know, when you're first starting to find love for the first time, it is an interesting feeling. It's, it's overwhelming. It's, it kind of consumes you. It's the first time you're truly feeling love for the first time that's not for your parents or siblings or mothers or aunts or fathers, you know, whoever. And when you have that connection, this new connection, it feels like it's truly something special. It feels like something you might not ever have again. The intensity is, is something else. I do remember that for sure. And it reminds me of a story of when I was young, around this age, and the neighborhood kids that I would play outside with and just hang out with. There was this girl that was maybe two or three years younger than me. I didn't see her as a romantic option in any way. I pretty much grew up with this girl. She was a, a neighbor of mine. 
But I remember one day my mother getting angry with me and me being kind of confused by the whole thing. And the talk that I got from her of you cannot string girls along. You cannot, you know, make them think that there's, you know, they have a chance with you. If they don't, like you have to end things very quickly and be, you know, assertive in that aspect. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? When in reality, looking back at it now, I think my mother was talking about this girl that would kind of just follow us around. And obviously she might have been into me, but I just didn't see it as that at all. But I, from a very young age, my mother was always very much against me stringing anybody along and breaking anybody's hearts. But that was interesting for me because I just didn't realize it. But I also, sometimes when you're at that age, you just don't have the emotional maturity to end things or or to develop relationships in healthy ways. A lot of people, it's about attention. You know, you get attention from somebody, even though you might not see them in a romantic way. You like that attention. You like that feeling of feeling important. But my mother's lesson was valid. It's important to know how to handle these situations in an emotionally intelligent way, even when you're a child. And being warned about that ahead of time, I think really helped me out later in life. Is it a high school dance? Okay, full transparency, I think I've actually heard this one. I must have heard this on the radio uh, a couple years past or whatever. But honestly, I remember kind of enjoying this one. If I remember correctly, it has a very interesting bridge to it. And it's uh, the melodies is just something that I, I always enjoyed. This was probably a no skip when I heard it on the radio. So yeah, not a bad little jam. But I've never paid attention to lyrics. I, I probably just appreciated the melodies. Now I'm paying attention to the lyrics. So it seems to be a, a story of Romeo and Juliet, but it also seems a little confusing to me, especially this line here. And my daddy said, stay away from Juliet. So is Taylor Romeo in this situation? Now let's just see where this thing goes. I'll save my analysis for the after, these, after the song. They're sneaking around. Scarlet letter. The accent melody is cool. There it is. Yeah, it's a great bridge, man, and it's an awesome run. That implementation of like the violin and the acoustic guitar together, it's got hints of indie, a touch of folk to it, but it still has like that rock and beat behind it that just like makes you, I don't know, like 
it just feels you kind of with euphoria. But like one of the reasons I think I was drawn to it was the dramatics of it all. I mean, it's just so dramatic, even though, I don't know, it has kind of a positive swing or it's in a positive key. But maybe the storytelling isn't exactly the most positive message. I mean, it's Romeo and Juliet. So, yes, it's very romantic, but it's just from a different perspective and a different story. I don't know. Let, let's see where it's going. I'm still trying to piece the whole thing together. But awesome bridge. You know what? One more time. I love the bridge. Just like the right touch of dramatics. Wonderful build. God damn, I am a sucker for a good love song. This is beautiful. This is a masterclass in storytelling and song structure and building. Yeah, this is awesome. I was a little confused here as to like what the Scarlet Letter meant from Juliet and where she was in this relationship. The roles were reversed for whatever reason. Uh, but it's a classic love song, love song. And like my favorite parts of some of the movies that I enjoy, and I get shit for this all the time. I'm a big fan of like rom-coms. My wife gives me shit for it all the time because she likes like crazy horror flicks and I, I can't stand them. I can't stomach them. But I like rom-coms. I like, I like things that wrap up in a very nice and neat package. And at the end of the day, everybody's happy. Everybody got what they want. They fall in love. It's, it's happily ever after. I don't know. I can't help it. There's, there's too much crazy shit happening in the world from day to day. War, politics, everything that's constantly, you know, assaulting us. This, this constant sense of, of like just being assaulted by negativity that like, that's why I like to sit with a nice good book or a nice rom-com or something that just ties up in a nice neat package. And this song 100% does it for me. At first, the story is no, the parents don't like each other or they don't like whoever. I'm not sure if it's the, his parents that don't like her. I'm leaning that way or her parents that don't like him. I'm leaning that it's his parents that don't like her in this situation. But at the end, the dad's like going to buy him a, buy her a wedding dress and you know, she thought that she was losing him, but the last minute he knelt down and like proposed. Then it's just beautiful. It just gives me chills. I'm an idiot though, because yeah, I've heard this song before. I didn't realize it until we got into the first hook, but I never paid attention to lyrics. <laughs> if I would have just like stopped and like really just like absorbed what the song was about, I probably would have became a Swifty right then and there, <laughs> you know, but I was dumb. I was dumb. No, my, my, one of my day jobs is I do sound design and sound engineering. So I pay very close attention to the structure of music and in just the general sounds that are used in how they play with each other. So that's what my ear is automatically drawn to. That was awesome. That's a master class in songwriting right there. Love story. My favorite song on the album so far. All right, we have another character. We have Abigail and now we have Steven. Let's uh, see what his deal is. Tambourine? Yeah. Everything so far has had like this pop rock with little t with little bits of influences of folk to it. Uh, but now we have an element of groove, some tambourine, an upswing melody. All right, Steven, what's going on? Does that mean Steven's ugly? Is that a diss? Is that a burn?
Oh, okay, no. Steven, Steven's a fox. He's a stone cold fox. The touch of organs nice. Hey Steven, I've been holding back this feeling so I got some things to say to you. Huh. I seen it all so I thought but I never seen nobody shine the way you do. The way you walk, where you talk, where you say my name, it's beautiful, wonderful, don't you ever change. You can even hear like the difference in her cadence from the first album to this one. Like I could tell there would have been a little bit more of a draw to the way that she, you know, emphasized everything in those two lines. Uh, but in this one, there's like almost no draw whatsoever to it. Now, I understand these are re-recordings because of the Taylor version, but there's definitely a difference. I almost wish I almost wish that she could have sampled her original recordings because there's a good amount of layering happening here. And just put just enough of an effect on it where it would be considered fair use in some kind of way. And she could have used her younger voice that she used naturally on the first track, layered with her new now mature voice, uh, and just seeing how that would have sounded. I don't know the legalities behind that. You probably can't do it, but that, that would have been pretty cool if they could have. Tell him. <laughs> All those other girls, well, they're beautiful, but would they write a song for you? <laughs> She's got a thing for the rain. She likes to get wet. Showing some control here. Okay, not bad. Hey, Steven. Okay, so I think this song is pretty straightforward for the most part. She's into this dude. He probably has no idea. Uh, there's 50 things she could have told him as to why she or he should have been with her instead of one of those other girls. She's going to be out there in the cold rain. She'd be, you know, writing a song for him as she just did. I often wonder, like, what happened? Did Steven ever call her after? <laughs> you know? Guys are mostly clueless when it comes to this stuff. We're not exactly astute when it comes to people's feelings, especially when we're young. We just don't really know. We're too, I mean, everybody is just too self-absorbed. You know, we're worried about homework. We're worried about what happened at gym. We're worried about sports. We're worried about anything, really. So you kind of, <laughs> if you're a young person watching this right now, you kind of just got to go to the guy and you got to be fearless. You got to go up to him and be like, hey, I like you. I'm into you. I think you're cool. Do you want to hang out? I can't promise it's going to work. 
I can't promise that person is going to like you, but you're going to save yourself so much aggravation. You're going to, you're going to save yourself so many headaches if, you know, you just go and do that right away. Because why string yourself along? Why get invested in something with somebody that has no interest in being with you? Move on to the next thing, you know? Life is filled with love, you know? And even though you might be obsessed or infatuated with one person, it's going to change. You're going to find somebody else. There's just there's there's a lot of fish in the sea, you know, and you got to kind of get over it. But I can't help but think that after this song came out, I wonder if like Steven just like heard it on the radio or popped in her CD. It was like, oh, shit, <laughs> I could have been dating Taylor Swift. And now look now look at me, you know, and I think partially that is Taylor Swift's fault. <laughs> she should have just come out and told him. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm just kind of grasping at straws here. But uh, yeah, nice little song. It's cool to have some uh, groove elements uh, added to the album. So far, everything has had like this pop rock and folk type of in uh, influence to it. And uh, this is a, a different vibe. Ooh. All that dramatics. Give me the sustain on the piano. Give me the touch of the acoustic guitar. I want that heavy cello. That is beautiful. It's going to be somber, I know. <laughs> but I love it. I can tell this is going to be my favorite. Okay, so this is interesting. So instead of a dude leaving Taylor or not acknowledging her or stringing her along or doing something bad to her, even though I feel that she's upset with this person here, it sounds like she is leaving him. And I'm glad that I know what I know about Taylor Swift now because so far from the general direction of this, it seems like she's kind of in the mindset of not being a hopeless romantic, you know, not being able to fall in love. And I know that, you know, she eventually does come around. But if this was the last we heard from her, like it would break my heart. I'm like, oh, geez, put yourself out there again. Be fearless. Maybe I was naive, got lost in your eyes and never really had a chance. Well, my mistake, I didn't know to be in love. You had to fight to have the upper hand. Oh. I had so many dreams about simple but effective and there you are on your knees begging for forgiveness begging for me just like i always wanted but i'm so sorry because i'm not your princess this ain't a fairy tale i'm gonna find someone someday 
good. Okay, so I thought the whole thing would be fairly cynical and like it was like her almost like giving up on what she's looking for in her fairy tale, you know, like giving up on being that hopeless romantic, but that's not what this is about. It sounds like the relationship got kind of complacent. It sounds like it may have even gotten a little bit toxic. You know how it is. You get in with certain people, like you can never be right. Or they always have to like one up you in some kind of way. It sounds kind of like that. And it's, it's an immature way of thinking and it's just an immature way of being, but it's also kind of how a lot of us are when we're young, you know? You have to learn to love. You have to learn to have, you know, emotional em like empathy towards somebody else. You have to learn that you're not the entire world. Everything doesn't revolve around you. To be in a real, true, healthy relationship, I feel like you got to be in a couple bad ones. Not just to be able to, like, find what you don't like or whatever, but to really be able to grow, to really be able to put yourself out there like in an emotionally intelligent way and learn how to love and be loved in the healthiest way possible. And it's not something that happens easily for most people, if anybody really. I don't know, for me, it took a couple times, took a couple tries at it, you know? It took a couple checks to my own ego and checks to like just who I was and, and taking stock as to like how I treated people and how I wanted to be treated and what kind of person I was and what kind of person I was actually being, you know, and sometimes we're just young and dumb and stupid. And I'm, I'm happy that Taylor had enough self-worth at this point to see that, that she was kind of wasting her time in this sort of scenario. She wants to be with a person that's going to love her. Like she's going to love somebody else. And as we all know, she kind of puts everything into her relationships. And if she's going to lay it all online and she's going to like emotionally truly invest with somebody, she's going to need that back. And I'm glad that she has enough wherewithal to kind of see that she wants that as well. And she's not going to waste too much time with somebody that doesn't do that for her. But there is a sense of somberness to this because I don't think that she's so over him to the point where she's like so disgusted by him. She's still suffering a loss here. And I think it shows both sonically and in her writing. She's going off about something that you said She doesn't get your humor oh, sure. like I do Alright, I know this one too, sorry This is the one where she like modulates her voice a little bit, I think I'm in my room, it's a typical Tuesday night I'm listening to the kind of music she doesn't like And she'll never know your story like This one's not bad. So this is even something I'm recognizing. So I remember hearing this one on the radio and this one I also enjoyed too. Have I been a Swifty all along? I just had no idea. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, I feel like there was a little bit more emphasis on the modulation with C and me before, where this just sounds a little bit cleaner. So maybe I'm just used to the original version and not this one. This is also, I feel like a cool little stepping stone from the uh, self-titled album to this one. It still has elements of country to it, but it's leaning more in that folky rock pop direction. You know, we have the slide of the guitar right there, so something feels almost nostalgic or reminiscent of her beginnings. But at the same time, there's like a very clear 
evolution. Walk in the streets with you and your worn out jeans. I cannot think this is how it ought to be. Laughing on a park bench, thinking to myself, hey, isn't this easy? And you've got a smile that could light up this whole town. I haven't seen it in a while since she brought you down. You say you're fine, I know you better than that. Hey, what you doing with a girl? This sounds punchier, too. Yeah, there's like a certain amount of fuzz and punchiness to the guitar, even on the bridge here. I think this one, compared to the original, there's there's a good amount of differences, if I remember correctly. And also, is this song about Steven? Ooh. It's got more depth. that touch of country hear that slide the touch of the plick the pluck of the guitar the little slide of the guitar it's like hey remember me i'm the little country princess psych now i'm gonna rock your socks off Joe's still there. You belong with me. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I've heard this one. I, this was probably on the radio everywhere, but it's also, it's a great little jam here. Again, I really like the bridge. What's there really to say about a song that wasn't so clearly illustrated just in black and white here for us? It's that storytelling nature. I always want to touch on the lyrics and what it means to me and how it's making a person who's enjoying these songs for the first time uh, feel. But it's most of these songs are, are delivered in such a way that it's like the story's right there. It is what it is. Um, so there's really no way for me to really break this down. Obviously, she's into some dude. I think it might be Steven, maybe, if I had to guess. And, you know, he's all about those popular girls. And if I remember from that song, the girls were tripping over themselves to get, a lot, uh, to get with them. So... That, I guess, checks out. But she's just basically saying, hey, you know, I'm not the popular girl. I'm, you know, I'm I'm, I'm not a cheer captain. I'm just out here in sneakers, just like your regular girl next door type of uh, person. And you'd be better with me uh, for it because I'm the one that actually understands you. I'm the one who sees through this. And it's not just like a vanity thing for me. And she's not lying. <laughs> so there is that. But this is a cool little catchy song. Again, it's got a cool little upswing to it. The tambourine's back, so we get some more groove elements. But it also is reminiscent of some of her earlier works. You know, I thought for sure going into this album that I'd be getting a lot more country and something more reminiscent of her self-titled album. But it seems like she changed fairly quickly, which is strange to me because the self-titled album was a massive hit. <laughs> so I wonder how people took it when she's like, hey, I'm actually going to go in a little bit of a different direction. I want to give a more raw sound. I want things to be a little bit more dramatic. I want to put a pop rock and folk twist on this whole thing. So far, I think I'm digging this one a little bit more than the self-title just because it seems like there's more to sink my teeth into. But at the same time, I'm surprised as to how quickly it changed. Featuring Kobe Collett. I 
see your face in my mind as I drive away. What? Cause none of us thought it was gonna end that way. Every once in a while, I think Taylor Swift is like dishing, like dishing out a sick burn. Her face is like a driveway, like plain. People are people, and sometimes we change our mind. True. But it's killing me to see you go after all this time. Mm -hmm. The music starts playing like the end of a sad movie. It's the kind of ending you don't really want to see Cause it's tragedy and it'll only bring you down Now I don't know what to be without you around And we know it's never simple, never easy Never a clean break, no one here to save me You're the only thing I know, like the back of my So this this feels like a breakup. It feels like she's falling out of love with somebody, but there's also something that is very much not romantic about this. Maybe she's losing a friend or maybe it, maybe it is a breakup with somebody, but knowing you like the back of my hand, like if it was a breakup, especially with the guy she was talking about earlier, that sounded like that was kind of ending in a toxic way. She couldn't change him and he couldn't come in and save her from anything. And she seemed to be kind of over it. So I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I'll, let's just see how this plays out. I'm, I'm over, I'm overthinking. She's cognizant of the feelings. She's not saying love. It's somber. Can't sleep on the bridges. <laughs> it's somber but beautiful. It's too late Feeling like I just lost a friend. Hope you know it's not easy. Easy for me. It's too late So it's not a friend? First off, that transition, that build right there was beautiful, the cello and all that stuff. But this song is just making me more and more confused. All right. So I'm not sure she's actually losing a friend. She's saying it's feeling like she lost a friend. And I was a little worried at first. I'm like, did something happen between her and Abigail? Oh, no. If she lost Abigail, it would obviously be very much black and white. She would say, I've lost this friend. I've lost this connection. So maybe this is a breakup. We know it's never simple, never easy. Never a clean break. No one here to save me. It's cinematic like a sad movie. Clever girl.
Oh, man, I'm loving all the dramatics in this. Yeah, it getting super cinematic here towards the end and her talking about the music of a sad movie. It's perfectly playing into that narrative. I don't know if this is the end of a romantic relationship. I don't think that it is. Normally when she's talking about some kind of romantic partner, I've noticed that she's very descriptive in some of his um, physical features, cool hair, uh, getting lost in the eyes, and just other things I've kind of picked up from some of her other music. So I thought this was possibly about losing uh, just somebody else, like a friend in her life or something. But then she says it's not like losing or it's just like losing a friend. If she's losing a friend, she would say she's losing a friend. I think. I don't know. I'm a little confused on this one, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Her vocals are awesome in this. Great build. Very cinematic. The touch of the what sounds like almost banjo in this, like it's a little bit more scratchy. I think it's probably just a modern uh, production technique. It probably sounded a little bit more like a banjo in the original version, if I had to guess. But she's still, you know, at a loss from the ending of whatever this relationship is. I don't know. If you guys know, if this one's been explained, let me know. Because she does say conflicting things. Breakbeat? I took a chance. I took a shot. And you might think... See, this is quite, it's, it's very obviously about a dude, <laughs> you know, love, heart, you know, heartbeat, her getting actually, her, her emphasizing what her emotions, how she feels and, and basically using the metaphor of like a violent action happening. Like this, it, it's, it's cut and dry. Temper. It's so busy, but it has so many elements of country to it. This is like the most sonic. This is the most similar sonic experience to her original stuff, but just like an upswing in the tempos uh, a little bit higher. It's incredibly busy. So it has like the atmosphere and like the attack of what rock music has. But she's using instruments like the slide guitar and the banjo in here um, to give it that country twist, but the drums are just hitting so hard that it's definitely has that rock element to it. But I love how busy it is. Fantastic vocal performance.
tell me why. Okay, so yes, this is very clearly she's talking about a dude. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so he's got a temper and there's issues. He's putting her down. He doesn't believe in her. And this whole song even sonically feels like a fight. It's incredibly busy. And as much as I enjoy all the busyness, as much as I enjoy this kind of balance between country and rock, you know, walking this tightrope together in just this sonic fusion, I think I'm more impressed with her vocal performance on this. It's She's showing a lot of vocal maturity on this one. I'd be interested to hear her original version and see how see how that sounds because I think on this version she absolutely nailed it. She's soft and breathy when she needs to be, but she still has that angst and that attitude as well. It's one of those things I was a little worried about. Her going back and doing the the TV versions of things is I didn't know if she was going to be able to invoke this like inner these inner feelings that she had, but I don't think that's an issue for her at all. So her even going back around and doing like the uh, her debut album, I don't think it's going to be an issue. But this is probably her most aggressive song I've heard from her up until this point on this timeline, and uh, I love it. So good. It's almost a waltz.
what the fuck? That was, uh, that was that was good. It was incredibly dramatic, cinematic. Again, I think there's me breaking these lyrics down. I mean, I think it's 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 obvious. I'll tell you what I think, but I think just listening to this, you can just tell. It's about a relationship that kind of fizzled out, and you know. She's not blinded by initial infatuation anymore. And she sees some of the toxic characteristics in this person and she's done with it. She wants to walk away from it. This, this life is not for her. And it's about her realizing that this person's never actually going to be sorry. This person is too self-involved and, and just a fucking prick. <laughs> but it still hurts. And it tells it, it tells, it shows, and you can feel the hurt, you know, sonically just through the expression of these instruments. And God, I really kind of want to listen to the original version right now and just see if it had this kind of sonic fidelity because this is just dramatic in all of the right ways. It's beautiful, but it's beautiful in a somber approach. And it's just, it's a lot to take in. I'm surprised the writing is this good on her second album. There's some absolute bangers on this album. I kind of went into this thinking it was going to be a lot more country and it was going to be a lot more of that. And I just kind of get through with it just to kind of understand the overall story of Taylor Swift and, and where she started and where it's, what it's gone to and, and where it goes and kind of get immersed in the whole thing and just try and do it the right way. But as I'm listening to these early recordings or even re-recordings, these earlier written songs, I'm realizing there is a lot of emotional maturity in these lyrics. There's a lot of just mature writing in all of this. And as much as I thought that I would have nothing to connect with, I'd have no reason to really enjoy this all that much. I find myself more and more infatuated with the storytelling and, and the rhythmic elements and just the melodies. I mean, hell, just even the, the violin and the guitar dancing together in this song, going back and forth, finishing each other's phrasings, the subtle inflections. There's a lot to take in. I know it's somber, and it might not be everybody's favorite song, but this is one of my favorites in the album right here. Now we're celebrating. What a roller coaster. But my single friends are jealous. He says I'm on the defense. I need to hear and it's like I couldn't ask for anything better. He opens up my door and I get into his car and he says, You look beautiful tonight. But do we trust him? Do we trust this guy? I'm on the defense here. Everything is, is lining up for like, he's a, he's a good dude. All right. <laughs> he's making all the right moves. Things are looking good. All right. But I know better. I know better. Where is this going? This guy's going to turn out to be like a cannibal or something. He's going to start eating people.
I think she's talking about somebody else and she misses. I'll, I'll wait till the song's over. Magical. confusing okay leaning into the pop rock aspect here this is a total pop rock song everything was starting off so well but i knew better than to fall fall for that i knew there was going to be some kind of twist or some kind of uh butt that came into this so i could be grasping at straws here i could be completely wrong but i think that she is with somebody that seems perfect you know the parents get along he's you know kind and considerate he gives her everything that she wants uh they seem to be in a very healthy loving relationship and i think that she's reminiscing of a time that she was with somebody that's a little more toxic maybe the other guy that had those rage issues you know and she kind of almost misses that intensity, the intensity of the highs and lows of fighting with somebody and then making up. Yes, it's unhealthy and it's a roller coaster, but it can be a little bit more fun sometimes um, from my own experience. And when you really think about it, it's kind of sad. It's about somebody that's learning how to love. And even though she's with somebody that's perfect or ideally perfect for her now, uh, she, her her idea of what love is and how to love has been tainted by this person and she's missing that certain intensity and she's missing a certain behavior that is actually toxic and is going to hurt her in the end you know i've been in both those kind of relationships where everything is just perfectly fine and everything is just it's, it's beautiful together because you have this awesome you know mutual respect and trust and love for each other but I've also been in those relationships that are rocky and the person seems a little crazy and you never know what's going to happen. And sometimes it feels like you have to walk around on eggshells around that person because you don't know how they're going to take certain things. And in the long run, uh, even though it might be more interesting or fun at the moment, at least certain aspects of the relationship, uh, in the long run, it's better to be with somebody that you can just be honest and truthful and, you know, mundane with, uh, because that's really what stands the test of time. But I get it. I get it. This album is, is a roller coaster, man. Once upon a time, I believe it was a Tuesday when I caught your eye and we caught on to something. I hold on to the night. You looked me in the eye and told me you loved me. Were you just kidding? Cause it seems to me this thing is breaking down. We almost never speak. I don't feel welcome anymore. Baby, what happened? Please tell me. Cause one second it was perfect. Now you're halfway out the door. And I stare at the phone. He still hasn't called. And then you feel so broke. You can't feel nothing at all. And you flash back to when Was I out of line? Did I say something way too honest? Made you run and hide like a scared little boy. I looked into your eyes, thought I knew you for a minute. Now I'm not so sure. So here's to everything coming down to nothing. Here's the silence that cuts me to the core. Where is this going? Thought I knew for a minute, but I don't anymore. And I there at the phone he still hasn't called and then you feel so low you can't feel nothing at all and you flash back to when he said forever
So what's the point then? Busy. This one's probably awesome live. Okay, an incredibly busy pop rock song as well. So at first I was like, okay, another fucking dickhead here. I think she kind of switches the narrative. She keeps saying what he said, but down towards the end says when we said. So I think she's taking some responsibility to this whole thing. It sounds like this relationship was never really good. Uh, it rains when you're here. It rains when, you, when you're not, you know, so it's, I guess it's shitty at all times. But then again, Taylor Swift loves the rain, and she fantasizes about dancing in the rain and kissing in the rain. So I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing. I like this line over here. Did I say something way too honest made you run and hide like a scared little boy? I don't know if this song is about anybody in particular, but sir, you have been called out. Yeah, um, a relationship that possibly was good at one point. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like it was ever anything great. It always seems like it was kind of shitty. And she tried to be honest because I said forever and ever they're going to be together and this thing's going to be real. Uh, and he ran away like a scared little boy. This guy sounds like he sucks. You know, if you switch these instruments around, this would have an island flair to it. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say I'm getting like uh, a sonic whiplash from this album or it's a roller coaster. It's kind of all over the place. Give me that steel drum. I'm five years old, it's getting cold. I've got my big coat on. I hear your laugh and look up smiling at you. I run and run. Was she in a romantic relationship when she was five years old? Little kid. This is not a song about Taylor Swift being in some kind of relationship, but who's five years old. I think she's talking about her, her parents here. Oh my God. And she's singing from the perspective of a five-year-old. This is so cute. This is adorable.
I think it's about her mother. father. Very, very sweet. I like how she mentions her father and her brother and stuff, too. That's very cute. Oh, my God. Talking from the perspective of a five-year-old and then swinging it back around saying she now knows why all these things happen. Oh, my God. I just I feel like I went on a trip with her. This is sweet. This is cute. Sonically, it's, it's kind of the same thing over and over again, but that doesn't matter because this is such a sweet thing. Can you imagine Taylor Swift's mother when she showed her this song?
they put up to hold us back fell down it's a revolution throw your hands up cause we never gave in and we'll sing hallelujah we sang hallelujah hallelujah damn What an outro. Well, damn, I feel inspired to do some stuff. Okay, that is change. And I think this is just fundamentally talking about her determination and where she's been and where she thinks that she's going and her outlook on what she's done with music and and how she's going to uh, continue to push forward. One thing that's really fascinating about Taylor Swift that I've been learning from the documentaries is just in some of these interviews is just seeing her talk about things. Like even when she was talking about her music teacher when she was young, when you said you can't learn a 12 string electric acoustic or a 12 string acoustic guitar, uh, she went out and she's like, no, I, I'm going to learn this. And she waited six months till Christmas and then practiced for however long she could until she finally got it. Like she's the kind of girl like you can't say no to you can't do that because she's going to find a way to do it, uh, whether out of defiance or proving to herself or whatever. And, you know, one thing that I, I want to say to people is even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, you have to admire the determination of this girl. You have to admire her drive and where she started. Like, I just picture her as a little kid in the record companies dropping off her demo or saying, how do I get a label, a deal? And, and, and now seeing where she's at right now as one of the most influential people in the world. It really just goes to show you just got to fight through and you got to, you know, just keep on trying, keep on getting better. And with enough practice, with enough determination, you're going to get to where you want to be uh, as long as like you, you keep your, your head in the game and, and just keep going for it. Kind of funky.
Yeah, that was sweet. That's pretty good. Jump then fall. Okay, so she's in a good relationship here. She's going to be a support system. It's funky. We've got flange on the guitar now. <laughs> it sounds a little bit different than everything I've heard so far on this album. The general effect of some of the tones and stuff seem a little bit different on this one. Uh, but it's pretty positive and not too bad. It's like classic rock. Untouchable like a distant diamond sky. Out and I just can't tell you why I'm caught up in you I'm caught up in you Untouchable Love the breathy vocals.
even though this one has an up tempo, there's something incredibly calming about that. And I don't know if it's because they use some pads in this one and there's some interesting sustain on the guitar that makes the whole thing seem a little bit more atmospheric, but it feels almost dreamlike in just the sonic fidelity. And I think the song is about her dreaming of somebody and just talking about this dream. We've moved on to the portion of the album where she's in love with somebody and the love seems to be going in the right way. She has the butterflies in her stomach. She's dreaming about this person and she's thinking about all these fantastical ideas. I don't know if she's longing for somebody or if she's with somebody and she's still dreaming about, about them. But whatever it is, it's fairly positive. like this one better was i out of line did i say something way too honest made you run and hide like a scared little boy burn into your eyes thought i knew you for a minute now i'm not so sure so here's to everything coming down to nothing here's to silence it cuts me to the core where is this going that i knew for a minute
Yeah, it's definitely a lot more somber with just the strings and piano, huh? Even like the inflection on our voice, is, on our voice seems a little bit different as well. I think I prefer the piano version. I think it's a little bit more dramatic, and I feel like it may have fit a little bit better for the whole idea of this song and thinking that the relationship was going to go on forever, and they said forever and always, and obviously it didn't happen. He wasn't mature enough, and <laughs> he was just a... Like a scared little boy. I'll yeah, so I think... <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit more dramatic with just the piano. I think it it just touches more on the emotion of the relationship just ending. Taylor in her reign could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It's weird because it's country, but it's not. Awesome, though. This one is a little uh, conflicting. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the relationship is over or if they've had a fight or whatever. She doesn't want to go to him. She's not going to want to go to this place where she can remember this person fondly by remembering 
good times that they've had together. But she is going to like extend an olive branch in some kind of way. She's going to give him some kind of second chance, but he's got to make the first move. He's going to put the initiative in to come and try and fix this. And I believe if he does, then he'd have a second shot. I think that's what this whole song is about here. Uh, structurally and cinematically, I think it's beautiful. Uh, an, another great vocal performance here. This is uh, this is gorgeous. Yeah, this relationship is, it does not seem healthy. It seems like they're having some issues for sure. Talk to yourself, talk to the tears. But apparently there was some good times. Yeah, there was some laughs and there was some some positivity to this relationship. And, and she's willing to give it another shot. Even though from what we've learned from this song, it seems like she probably shouldn't. <laughs> She's got some kind of celebrity crush. She's not naming names though. talking about I'm dying to know who she's talking about. <laughs> sweet, sweet 
I usually don't give a shit. I don't care who she's dating. Unless Taylor Swift starts like dating somebody like Andrew Tate or something like that, I generally don't care. It, it just whatever. Let the girl live. Let her date whoever she wants. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. But this song is definitely making me curious. He's on stage. He's touring. His songs are on the radio. People have got to know. People have got to know. If you know who it is, let me know. I'm officially curious. God damn it. I'm invested in Taylor Swift's love life. God damn it. How did that happen? What did you do? It's that conflicting emotion again. This album has been so self-aware and honest. Second, wait a second. There's nothing that he that you can say to make this right again. I thought he she mis. I'm invested in her love life. Jesus Christ. All right. I thought that she misread the situation and overreacted, and that's what was going on. And she wants him to come back, and and whatever. But now I'm finding out that there's nothing he can say to make it right again. But she really wants him to come back. It's very conflicting. First off, that outro had such incredible beat mapping. 
Uh, okay, yeah, I'm a little confused, but I think that's the idea, is it's conflicting. In a lot of these songs, she's talking about some relationships that she has where the relationship is perfect. Everything is going great, you know? Like, the parents get along, they're, everything is just absolutely perfect. But she's always, like, thinking about this relationship that was kind of toxic. Sometimes she knows when to get out of it, and she's done with it, unless she's talking about different people, which that could be the case. But there's still like some kind of fascination she's having with somebody or some aspect of somebody's personality that isn't exactly good for her. But she's leaving the window just a little bit open. She's saying, I will give you one more chance. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to give you that chance, but I'm leaving this little sliver of hope that if you come back with your tail between your legs and you say you're sorry, I'm probably going to let you back in. And this is kind of like a revolving theme that I've noticed through a few of these songs. She's pissed. She's hurt. He obviously did something. <laughs> something fucked up. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe she's talking about multiple different people that have, you know, done different things that she's explained different songs, or maybe it's the same person. I don't know. Um, but she's still willing to give this person a second chance. It's honest. It's real. You know, these are the messy lives that we all have. These are the relationships. Very rarely are they cut and dry and just perfect. More often than not, there's a lot of mud involved. All right, so we've reached the end of the playlist. Well, kind of here, because there's still the vault tracks, which I'm going to get to in a video that'll be coming out in the next couple days or so. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to just focus on just the album itself, and it ends here with track 20. How does she pull it all together? I don't know. We're going to find out right now. was a fairy tale you were the prince i used to be a damsel in distress you took me by the hand and you picked me up at six today was a fairy tale it wasn't a tuesday was it today was a fairy tale today was a fairy tale i wore a dress you wore a dark gray t-shirt I was pretty when I looked like a mess The day was a fairy tale Time slows down Whenever you're around Well, can you feel this magic in the air? It must have been the way you kissed me Fell in love when I saw you standing there It must have been the way Today was a fairy tale Fairy tale, you've got a smile. Takes me to another planet. Some of that snare. Every move you make, everything you say is right. Today was a fairy tale. Today was a fairy tale. All that I can say is now it's getting so much clearer. Nothing made sense till the time I saw your face. Today was a fairy tale. Time's lost.
All right, so I guess we end with the old Taylor Swift, who she is, I believe, at her core, a, a hopeless romantic, and just really emphasizing the feeling of love and what it means to her, and when she is captivated by somebody, what that does to her. This one was a little different, too. Like, sonically, there was elements of electronic drums mixed in with the uh, actual organics. It was a pretty decent pop rock song, but... It kind of reminded me of, like, the soundtrack to some of my cheesier rom-coms. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect, but just kind of had that vibe to it. Uh, but, no, it was, it was pretty good. It, was, it wasn't too bad. I'm glad that, I guess, it ends on a happier note. You know, it you know in that aspect of a rom-com, everything has a nice little bow on it. And I'm left feeling like I kind of went through a journey. In fact, let's talk about this album as a whole. Fearless stands up to the name. Fearless is exactly what it says it's going to be about. It's about situations and putting yourself in situations that are going to better you as a person, but oftentimes are not the easiest things to do. You have to be fearless. You have to take those risks. You have to jump right in. And in some situations, it's not going to work out. You're not going to get that guy. He's not going to come back to you with his tail between his legs. You're not going to have this grandiose moment of vindication. But hey, man, that's life. What you will get from being fearless, what you will get from putting yourself out there is new experiences. You'll learn more about yourself. It's all about self-development. You're not going to be the person you are today in 10 years. Yes, there'll be aspects of yourself, of your personality that you're always going to carry with you, but you're not going to be the same person you are today as you're going to be in five years, 10 years. Hell, you might not even be the same person in a week's time. We are constantly evolving. We are constantly changing. We are learning from our life experiences. And if you truly want to grasp the best of what life has to offer, you have to be fearless. Sonically, this was quite the departure from the self-titled album. I was a little worried that it would be thematically in the style of country music. Well, there was an essence of country music thematically through this entire album. I don't feel like it overpowered anything. It was a touch of banjo here. It was a little bit of organ on this side. It was that slide guitar just on the touch end of the bridge. Just enough to remind you, hey, we're evolving here. It's kind of a brave thing to do, honestly. I mean, she had commercial success from the get-go. Her first album was a massive hit. The easy road, the easy thing to do would basically be follow that formula. I'm glad that she really wanted to experiment, and I'm even glad that her label let her experiment. I know, I know. Big Machine Records, whatever, fuck him. Scooter, he can suck a lemon. I get it. I understand. Trust me. I'm, I'm on that boat as well. But there is something to take away from this. Normally, when you have some kind of commercial success, your representatives, your label is going to be pushing you towards the direction of what is trending, not creating trends, especially on the second album. It was a creative risk, and I think it really paid off for it, and I think we all know that now. This album is through and through pop rock with sprinkles of folk music and a touch of country. But I don't think it's ever too much of one thing. I think the album itself continues to keep switching and morphing and changing. Now, honestly, there is some lows on this album, and I don't mean that as it's bad writing or it's bad storytelling or it's even it's bad singing. I'm talking about the actual feel you get from listening to a song. It's somber, but it's beautiful. And I feel like there's life lessons kind of sprinkled through the whole thing. But when it's low and it's dramatic, dude, you feel it in your chest. But on the flip side of that, we got some insane celebratory moments. There are some wonderful, sweet moments where she's talking about her mother, when relationships are working out, when things are going in the right direction. Hell, it feels like you've even accomplished something in some of like the, the dredging songs that talk about perseverance. It's truly a journey. I mean, you're, you go everywhere. I'm now just finishing this album, and it has been three hours. <laughs> Every once in a while, I go and I just think about what I just experienced, and then I come back in here and move on to the next song. But I've truly absorbed this album in my gut and in my heart and in my brain. And now I'm just kind of sitting here thinking, I've been through some shit. I feel like I've shared some experience or at least learned something from this album. And I can imagine countless other people have as well. But I'm glad that she had some artistic creativity here to move on and experiment and move on to different genres and basically dip her toe into a genre of music that she wasn't even signed for. And I think that's why we have the Taylor Swift we have today. I think that's why we got the album reputation. I think that's why we have folklore and I'm, there's still like five or six albums that I haven't gotten to yet, but I think that's why we have this kind of diversity It's because Taylor wants to experiment. She doesn't want to stick to one thing. She does not want to be pigeonholed, but hell what artists do, what artists want to be pigeonholed, what actors want to be typecast, none of them. 
So then why can Taylor Swift get away with this and other artists cannot? I think Taylor can pull it off because of three specific things. There's many more, but I can, I'm going to boil it down to three things. One, you got to be self-aware. You have to understand your surroundings. You have to understand your emotions when you went through them. You have to bring yourself back to that place when you were going through your highest high and your lowest low, and you have to make it readable. And in order to do that, you got to be self-aware. And the second reason is you have to be honest. <laughs> you have to be 100% honest to a fault. And I think Taylor Swift does that. And I've witnessed it a few times. People want to share experiences. And when you can share that experience, it makes it all the more meaningful. And when you can be honest with somebody and have a shared experience, well, then you have fans. But there's one more thing. There's one more thing that puts a cherry on top of this whole thing and makes the perfect storm like Taylor Swift exist. And that's reason number three. You got to be humble. Look, you can have a shared experience with somebody, but if somebody thinks you're an asshole or you're coming from it from a privileged standpoint and you're not realizing where you came from and really documenting things in a way that makes these shared experiences authentic, then you got a problem. Taylor Swift talks about being the girl next door and she kind of is like the girl next door. She talks about being the girl in the bleachers with the sneakers and all that stuff. She's not the cheer captain. She's kind of just this goofy girl next door. And she shares that. She shares that with people. She's a pop star, but she's not afraid to get out there and dance and be goofy and really just kind of humble herself. This is a thing that like a lot of big artists just don't get. They don't care. They just want that big paycheck. They get that album. They get the residuals coming in, whatever. Fine. Fuck it. They're going to do the rock star lifestyle forever. And there's going to be kind of closed off in this one dimensional thing. And then they wonder, well, hey, how come Taylor Swift is so big? Why does she have so many fans? How come she's this massive movement and I'm just this thing that just plays in the radio every once in a while? And they, do, they can't figure it out. It's that formula. My formula is not even talking about the actual artistry that is Taylor Swift, the actual songwriting, the actual vocal talent. Like, it's all of that combined. I'm really just breaking it down to its simplest terms. I think it's something that's really missing in the music industry. And I think it's something people are craving because for too long, we've all had throwaway music. Hell, nine times out of 10, the music that I react to feels kind of like throwaway music. That doesn't feel like there's any substance behind it. That's why when I do these deep dives in artists, I, I tend to start at the beginning and work my way up. I really want to feel them. I really want them to be something more substantial to me. I really want to understand the entire scope of what that artist is. It doesn't exactly help my numbers, but I don't really give a shit about the numbers. What I do give a shit about is finding authentic artists, finding real true talent, finding something that is special, finding that needle in the haystack. I think Taylor Swift's one of those artists. But overall, man, I really enjoyed Fearless. I honestly did. I feel like it was a fast evolution into the next step of the phase of her career. I feel like she kept one toe in that country genre, but really truly moved on and experimented with a little bit of pop and really started to foreshadow her uh, folk songwriting abilities. So where do we go from here? All right, the next step for me is I'll be doing the vault tracks. Then I'm gonna do all the music videos for all of this era. Then I'll be doing some live performances and also some interviews or whatever else is followed in this era. Anyway, guys, I think that's gonna do it for me. Thank you guys all so much for all the support and checking out these reactions and going on this long <laughs> journey with me. I understand these videos are very long uh, and I appreciate you guys hanging out and clarifying things for me and just kind of being with me as I'm going through every step of this journey. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful night and I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.